Good afternoon. This is Steve Rudolph of Stepper 3 LLC with a presentation on stepper motors, their application and use. This presentation may be distributed freely, provided no changes in material or appearance are made. The information presented here is intended to help newcomers understand the application of motion control products. Stepper 3 LLC makes no warranty or guarantee concerning the accuracy of this information. Stepper 3 LLC accepts no liability for inaccuracy of this information or its application. When discussing a stepper motor, generally you'll hear people discuss a NEMA 23 stepper motor, a NEMA 34 stepper motor. NEMA, or the National Electrical Manufacturers Association, has come up with a standard for the frame size of stepper motors. The frame size refers to the motor mounting pattern. It's the physical characteristic of the motor. A NEMA 23 stepper motor has a 2.3 inch square flange with four mounting holes, one in each corner of the square. A NEMA 34 stepper motor has a 3.4 inch square mounting flange also with an individual hole at each corner of the square. A NEMA 17 stepper motor has a 1.7 inch square mounting flange. There are other NEMA frame sizes, such as NEMA 11, NEMA 14, NEMA 42, but by far most applications will use the NEMA 17, NEMA 23, or NEMA 34 stepper motors. Here is a picture of a standard NEMA 23 uh, flange. You'll notice that it's approximately 2.3 inches square in this case 2.25 with one with four mounting holes one in each corner that are spaced 1.86 inches apart excuse me now this pattern is going to hold up from motor to motor so if you purchase a stepper 3 NEMA 23 motor generally you can remove the stepper 3 motor from your application and replace it with an applied motion products or any other NEMA 23 stepper motor. Now that does not take into account the electrical and or uh, torque characteristics of the motor. That simply means that the mounting will be the same. Stepper motor drivers. There are two types of stepper motor drivers on the market today. There are unipolar stepper motor drivers and there are bipolar stepper motor drivers. And the selection of drivers is critical in how well the system is going to perform as a whole. Unipolar stepper drivers are by far the least expensive stepper motor drivers out there. Unipolar drivers only work with 6-wire or 8-wire stepper motors. They will not work with 4-wire stepper motors. Unipolar drivers are generally not considered a high quality driver and the reason for that is that you lose 30 to 40 percent of the rated motor torque when using a unipolar driver as compared to using a bipolar driver. Additionally, most unipolar, unipolar drivers have no current control built into them. Now, in, in the next few slides you'll see why the current control is important. However, just a side note, unipolar drivers generally are hobbyist drivers. They're not really commercial drivers. Uh, if your budget will allow, you really would be much better off going with a bipolar driver. Okay, now I stated before that unipolar stepper motor drivers uh, do not generally have current control in them. Now that's a generalization. There are some unipolar drivers out there that do have current control built into them, but by and large most of them do not. Now, what is current control? Well, it's important to note that a stepper motor has two windings in it. Each winding has a current rating, which usually is on the nameplate of the stepper motor. Uh, in future slides you'll hear me talking about a 2 amp per phase motor. Um, if you're using a two-phase stepper motor, such as the Stepper 3 Econa Step line, there are two windings in the motor, and the rating, 2 amps, are, is for each phase of the motor. So, 
you will have two phases, each requiring two amps. Now, drivers with current control limit the amount of current that passes through each phase of the motor. That means that you program in the rated value of that phase. For instance, it, a set point of two amps. The stepper motor driver will make sure that that motor does not draw more than two amps per phase. And the reason for that is it doesn't want to overheat the motor and result in a failure. Now, there is a huge advantage to having current control in a stepper motor driver because you can use a higher voltage power supply. Now, the higher voltage power supply will give you several advantages which we'll discuss later. Okay. Now, the typical stepper motor acts as a generator when it's moving. Okay, it generates what we call a back EMF. The back EMF increases as the motor speed increases. The back EMF is a voltage that is in reverse polarity of the voltage applied to the motor terminals, um, or reverse polarity to the power supply applied to the motor, thereby reducing the amount of voltage available for the motor to do actual work. It's very interesting to consider when you're spinning a motor, it actually generates a voltage. Now, that's called back EMF. Now, what happens is, let's say that the motor is rated at 3.3 volts at 2 amps per phase. Okay? What does that really mean? If I took a stepper motor with, 3 point, uh, with a 3.3 volt and 2 amp per phase rating, and I put 3.3 volts across the terminals of the motor, and I did not cause the motor to spin, it would draw 2 amps. At rest, the motor draws the most current, and that's because the back EMF reduces the current. So, if I were to continue to you, to, if I were to spin that motor, in order to get the most power out of that motor, I need to maintain 2 amps per phase through that motor. As the back EMF is generated, it reduces the amount of current through the stepper motor phase. So if I use a higher voltage power supply, I can overcome that back EMF, thereby allowing me to run a higher current through the motor at higher speeds. However, you have to have a current controlled driver in order to allow you to use that higher voltage so that at slower speeds or when the motor is at rest, it does not exceed the rating of the motor. Drivers with current control utilize what's called pulse width modulation to control the current through the motor coils. Pulse width modulation turns a pulse on, turns the power supply on in pulses to control the average current through the stepper motor winding. As the pulse width decreases, the average current through the winding decreases. As the pulse width increases, the average current through the motor winding increases. So, what normally happens is built into the driver, there is a current sense circuit that where a resistor senses the amount of current through the motor, provides a feedback signal to the driver. Let's say our set point is 2 amps. As the current through the motor falls below 2 amps, the pulse width is increased, increasing the current through the motor winding to maintain 2 amps. As my current comes up above 2 amps, the pulse width is decreased to reduce the current through the winding. That's called pulse width modulation. It's a very common technique in stepper motor drivers. Since the driver can then control the amount of current through the windings of the motor, significantly greater voltage can be applied. These higher voltages reduce the impact of the back EMF, thereby allowing the stepper motor to have a greater torque at higher speeds. Now, generally a rule of thumb is no greater than 10 times or 15 times the rated uh, motor voltage should be used for power supply voltage. For instance, if you have a 5 volt stepper motor, you really don't want to go above 75 volts, otherwise the motor will overheat. However, it's recommended that you don't really go below 10 times, so you don't really want to go below 50 volts. 